preparing the live stream. Yeah, yeah. just drop the URL in the chat when you got it and I'll throw it out there. It's taking its own sweet time, let me tell you. Yeah, it's been slow. But now that you mentioned what all the issues going on, I think when I do my webinar for GeoGebra next Wednesday night, I'm gonna yeah, what was just that? do, I'm only gonna do YouTube live. Okay, I don't copy the streaming link. It's doing weird things right now. It's doing mastering feet. Oh my gosh. This thing drives me nuts. It, um, it says it we're live now. Faults to whatever I did last time. Mm -hmm. We're live now. Yeah, I know. Just relax. <laughs> I am going to get these things, and we still have five minutes. Yep. But but the, I don't really have a choice. I have to start it about fifteen minutes in advance. I'm behind, so just so I can get the whole thing set up. Right. We well, just notify subscribers and put right, on Twitter. So and I need to replace the thumbnail. It put in the thumbnail from Mastering Feedback, and then it put the description from Mastering Feedback. We uh, uh, thank you, Alfonso. But uh, the chat is still going on too. Yeah, they should not be able to chat if they if they can't. Wait, a minute. I said it. To attendees can chat with no one. So, how is he able to do that? I don't know. Well, thank you for the compliment. I'll, but yeah, no. We uh, if you put the chat, so go to YouTube. You can put the chat in YouTube. YouTube there, let's actually, yep. uh, let me get your YouTube this link. Is, this is the link to the YouTube stream. Oh, you got it there? All right. Yeah. And I am editing the description right now. Oh, he said it's disabled. Yeah. Thank you for the feedback. What's the chat is disabled? Well, then how is he able to chat? The high able to chat, actually, I just thought. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Um, Only I was less stupid. You're going to do a trade, my friend. Next, we're going to do Alice Teaches Tim Minecraft. No, I'd like to do Alice Teaches Tim all the Google tricks because, you know, I mean, like my Google knowledge is okay, but I want it to be way better. So, you know, you could just read my entire blog. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we can all do that. Hey, Chris, how are you? Oh, I'm doing all right. Thanks. Good. Okay. So I'm going to save. I'm going to put it on Facebook. Yeah, I'm putting it on Twitter now. Cool. I'll put a picture there too. I'll put the part two picture. You find oh, where to go. Um, where'd it go, where'd it go? Oh, let me just go to my phone and just airdrop it again. Oh, I know, it's my download, silly. So we have completely disabled interactivity and chat with viewers. Yeah, just um Okay, so I posted it there. I got Twitter here. Hang on. Got two minutes. All right, just tweeted it. Do you want the link to the tweet? No, I just did it on Sunday. Right. Oh, okay. Um, and then I will pull up. Hey, Chris, are you able to put like um, the YouTube thing on your phone or something where you could see the comments? I can see the comments over here if you want. 
Oh, just I'm just in the that's the Zoom comments. Hang on. Yeah, in yeah from the. Where's the you? I don't. Where's the YouTube link? Oh, there it is. Yeah. So, are, do you want me to text it to you? Yes, please. Okay, let me text it to you because I think it. I like to put the YouTube. I, I pause the video and then I can see the chat and I just keep it next to my phone. And I've switched my screen to thirty minutes of inactivity which really drains my battery. But um, then, it, you know, when I'm doing things like this, it doesn't go off. So since the format Tim is teaching me. Yeah, if you want, I'll try and answer what I can on the YouTube. And um, yeah, that would be awesome. And interrupting if people have questions on the YouTube yep. would be amazing. That's that, that's sort of what I view, viewed my job as. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna launch it. Right, I. I think. Ooh. Why people can chat. So for those of you who are attending in this, due to security issues with Zoom, I am shutting off any ability to do anything. So you should, in theory not be able to chat. I am not going to check the Q&A, so don't bother with that. Um, have had issues. So if you would like, you can go to my YouTube channel and we are live streaming this and you can chat on the YouTube channel, which I believe YouTube has a content filter. I looked it up today. So um, that would, and we're gonna check the chat in YouTube. So if you would like to ask a question, use the YouTube chat or we are using the hashtag uh, GGB chat. Is that it? Yeah. Hashtag okay. GGB chat. chat. I'm going to just put that on the slides. The popular one we had. Of course, I did not use it just a second ago. Okay. So here's what it's 1101. So I'm going to screen share the title slide and get it officially started. You guys ready? We're ready. Okay. So just, um, uh oh, no, it's under. Share. Present. So, hey, everyone. I am Alice Keeler, and I'm here with Tim Brzezinski and Chris Brownell. And Tim is going to teach me GeoGebra. Now, the format of this is Tim teaches me GeoGebra. So, here's what's happened is over the years, I have seen GeoGebra, I'm like, wow, that looks cool and hard. And I'm doing really great with my Google stuff. And I, and I like it and I just don't use it. And then I love Tim, he's like the best. No one oh, loves thanks. GeoGebra more than Tim. And he's always like, oh, you could do all these things. And I'm like, yeah, so I'm saying that's a lot. You could do a lot. So he has promised me that I am wrong that it is super easy and this is totally something that I could use in my math class. And I'm going to be honest, Tim, last week, because this is part two, yep. totally won me over. So, so awesome. you know, I, I'm, gonna use, I'm using Google Classroom, right? I, I've got Google Forms and slides and things that I like to use. Now, even if you're a Microsoft user with Microsoft Teams, Word, and Microsoft Forms, same thing. It's going to work the same. So what I really care about is I already have content and I want to know how does this weave together and this is not another thing. So I'm going to first recap what I learned last week and show what I why I thought it was so great and easy. And then Tim's going to take me to the next step. Tim, you want to throw anything in? No, oh, you said it. You said it perfectly. All right, now Chris Brownell, his job is to be sassy. He is here to make jokes. Nah. And uh, <laughs> help me out with the live stream chat, so I appreciate that. So if you go to YouTube, the chat is where we are taking questions on YouTube. And the hashtag that we are using, so if you want to participate on Twitter, is hashtag GGB chat and we will not be checking that during the live webinar but we will check it afterwards hashtag ggb chat and this is all about tim and we're going to pause here for long enough for you to get out your cell phone 
and use his QR code and he is gonna tell you all about how awesome he is. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, oh, thank you, Alice. Yeah, no, uh, my name is Tim Brzezinski and uh, sorry, one of my kids, that, which one do you need? Hurry up, which, what do you need? Laptop, the Chromebook's out there. All right, sorry, that's when you home, home school of four kids. So yeah, uh, my name is Tim Brzezinski. I'm the uh, light on, please. Thanks, dude. So put the light on, please. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I'm the professional life. development director at. <laughs> I'm the professional development director at uh, GeoGebra. Um, been there for about two months now, but if people thought I've worked for GeoGebra probably ever since I started using it. It's crazy, but um, I was a full-time high school math teacher for 15 years at Rowan High in Connecticut, uh, and also part-time at Central Connecticut State University. And all along, my philosophy of education has been one simple thing: I want to make a, I want to create an environment of learning where it's student-centered as much as possible, not teacher-centered. Like my biggest pet peeve is when I, when I, it's like, you know, like me being the center is like, I want the students to be at the center. I want them to discover. That's why I love using GeoGebra. And I love other ed tech apps too. I'm a big fan of Dezels, a big fan of TI when appropriate, but you know what? It's like, I believe teachers sh should learn the best of everything and take the best of everything and not be one camp only. You know, I want to make, I want to make that very clear, but it's all about pedagogical change. And, you know, why are we using the tech? As Alice even said once, I think in a tweet years ago, paperless is not a pedagogy. It never has been, it never will be. If all you're doing is using tech just to digitalize the boring worksheet in the lecture, it's gonna be just as ineffective. So um, GeoGebra naturally just lets the students become the center of attention just so much better than any of the other apps that I've seen, personal, my personal opinion. But again, it's a great, it's, it's a great uh, suite of apps. But if you take a picture of that barcode right there, you'll see social media links on your phone you can find. But um, yeah, so happy to be here. Thanks for being here. All right. Now, Chris, we don't have a slide for you, but if you want to real quick introduce yourself, sorry, put you on the spot. Oh, you really want me to say something. Um, I'm Chris Brownell. I work at Fresno Pacific University as a math education professor. I've been in this business for 30 plus years, and I'm just here for comic relief. Exactly. We had another slide, but I don't think it was important. Oh, no, it was it's oh. super important. Four slides. Yeah, join our join our Facebook group. If you're on Facebook, we have a, we have a, a group. Teach, it's called Teachers Using Joe English. Um, there's only three questions you got to answer pretty much. And for some reason, a lot of people don't see the I agree thing about the rules of the group. The basically, it's just, hey, no, no, uh, no uh, shame, no bashing, that kind of thing. You know, just respect everybody. We're all learning together, that kind of thing. So um, I'm a moderator there. GeoGebra started. I moderated a lot, but please uh, feel free to join and post your questions there. And don't feel like, you know, uh, I don't know, just ask. Even, even if there's no such thing as a stupid question, just please ask. So Tim does a lot of professional development around GeoGebra. He already mentioned that he's like the head of this for GeoGebra now because he's such a fan. And if that's what you're looking for is to get training from Tim, he's got lots of ways for you to do that. And today, though, you get to be on my ride. Tim's <laughs> teaching me. So this is a very specific format. Alice is driving. I'm going to try to keep him in my lane. And I want to understand. So we're going to go at my speed. So his other webinars are you can find at tinyurl.com slash Tim webinar. Okay. Got that down quickly because I know what you have it. But all the webinars I've done so far, you can intro, you know, whatever. We have one coming up next Wednesday night. You'll see the registration there. Um, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to stop this. No, I'm going to just stop the full screen. And I am just going to real quickly then go through what I learned last week. Right. So I go to geogebra.org. I am already logged in up here. I can see my A and it takes me to this page and I can search for an activity like linear equations. Actually, someone in the chat wanted to know, uh, dang it, the answer, whatever they ask, the answer is yes. Yeah, you can. <laughs> I'll take this, this to the activity. Yep, that one's been there and for what, ages, yeah. Kind of new to me is I feel like I thought GeoGebra was this, it's the graph, but actually GeoGebra is the full page that I can construct an entire lesson. So to me, that was one of my big takeaways last week, right? I can write on the page, I can create an interactive element to it to help students explore, and I can search for, let me try another one. 
Um, there's books. Forget how to find the books. Oh, by the way, just a little disclaimer. At by, hopefully by the end of the week, I'm working with a couple of people now on the team. We are going to make the front page having the or resources more organized better so that if you teach high school, middle school, elementary, whatever, it's all going to be in four icons there that you could pick and it'll be links to thousands of resources. Uh, easy to find. So the C, they would say book on here. Is that right? Yeah. Are you looking for a book? So any resource well, type. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah. Any resource type. It says books. Awesome. Just searching for no stuff. books on that topic. Okay. So here we go. Just change the topic. I got Steve Phelps. Graph. Yeah, you have no, nothing typed up there. All right, here we go. So I have this area circle. Um, we've got some extension questions. Okay, hold on. And then I'm going to click this three dots up here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to copy the activity. If you want to, yep. So what I want to do is I want to get this into my Google Classroom and I want to make a lesson. So this is cool, but this is Tim's lesson. And these questions are nice, but I, how do I get those answers? How do you get those answers, Tim? Right. Well, what, what, I, what I would actually have to do here, and this is something I have to work back on, but um, I would actually end up going, to, I would actually do the formatting here first. So if you go to add element for a second, you could actually see all, all that is is text right there. But if you make a question, go to the question mark thing. All right. Now I would actually go up there and copy question number one. So you can make four separate questions there. I was actually going to do okay, that at some and point. Where do those answers show up? You, uh, they, they will show up on your screen and your student screen when you assign it as a task in Google Classroom. That's really great, Tim. But I am a Google user. And while you just said Google, it wasn't Googly enough for me. So okay. I'm going to do well, forms.new. Ah, you want it. I forgot about that. You just want your Google form. I do. Is that all right? That's fine. Ellen you wants a Google form. Like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm not going to do all of them. Oh, well, because you take all these responses and put them in a spreadsheet, right? Make your life easier. Uh, the answer is always a spreadsheet, my friend. There's always a spreadsheet. Well, that would ask us a question. So, right. Go. This is what I would do because that's nice. I'm real. And, and because I'm new to this, I'm going to go with what I'm comfortable with. And what I'm comfortable mm -hmm. with is Google Forms. And eventually, maybe I'm going to be comfortable with how they respond right in GeoGebra. And it seems like your way is easier because I just go add element question. But OK, so but I, what I remember is, is what I need is the embed code. So I'm going to click mm -hmm. send. I'm going to click on the embed icon. I'm going to copy the embed code, right? Is that what I'm doing? Yep. OK, and then. I, well, you just you just saved and closed it. So now you got to open up a new tab. Go click on GeoGebra again. Okay. Up I'm there, sure. back. That takes you back home. Go to your profile. Okay. Yep. And now go back to the three dots. Well, now you're viewing oh, it. That wasn't it. No. Yeah. You could do that too, but go go to the three dots, lower corner. Go to edit activity because you want to continue editing it. Yeah, I do. I want to edit it. Edit it. Right. Okay. So now you're back so, to edit so mode. So this is, you know, our assessment as to whether or not I learned anything last week. Can I recreate it? That's the trick, right? Mm -hmm. And then I do web. Is that correct? Uh, I believe so. Give it a shot. Let's see. Web, and I put the URL with the embed code from the Google. Give form. it a second. There you go. And it shows yeah, up right there. That. This yep. just it just makes me happy on so many levels that I can just integrate my Google stuff in there. So. Let's say whatever this lesson, area of a circle. If I had a Google, well, it's, it's not so much a lesson. That's more of a demo than a lesson. But yeah, you could make you, lesson. Yeah, yeah. Because um, it's remote learning, right? So right. Well, that that one in particular, because if you hit the start the show button right there, that one's more of a demonstration versus like because I want kids to discover it. So like, I mean, basically the area of a circle. A lot of teachers teach is pi r squared, right? But when, when teachers like, I just want to give them the formula, like, no, 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 stop for a second. But really, I would pause it there. Just pause, hit pause right now. Boom. You know, and so I would ask a few in that Google form, I may ask a few key questions. Hey, number one, how does the area of the triangle, the so-called triangle compared to the area of the circle? You know what I mean? Question number two, you know, what? so how do you find the area of a triangle? Question three. So I'm taking kids, I'm relating back to prior knowledge here, you know. <laughs> I have to, if you want me to, I can re, I can copy that activity and get rid of the last stuff. Cause if you hit resume, it's going to oh, give oh, it away. Don't do any if you want me to. Huh? Dial it down. Okay. okay. That's what we're doing. 
All right. Finding an activity. Yep. And saying, yeah, it's good. It's just not me, right? I, right. I, I want to make a lesson. Uh, my current reality right now is I'm teaching online. So yeah, there's, there's a demo in there, but I feel like I should put some more on here because I can't demo it necessarily if they're mm. accessing it independently. So I am not doing a good job of modifying this right now, but that's my mindset right now. I got you. That I, I might you. take a uh, Google Slides that I already have. Do I also do that with the embed code? Yes. If you want to put a slides there, you can go get a slide presentation. Just go to what put to the web, whatever you do it, and then yeah. Okay. So let me just demo, let me just check it because this this is important to me. Mm -hmm. Slides, and I'm, I'm just gonna put a emoji on there because I can't help myself. Do it. Have some hugs. And so to get the embed code for slides, I file publish to the web. I go to the embed page and I publish. And that's where the code's gonna be. And then back over here in GeoGebra. Now I want it above this. I want to I want to see if I can figure this out, right? So I'm if I add element and I do web. And I mm -hmm. do the URL. Yep. Okay. Just give it a second. Is it coming? Mm, try it again. Interesting. Add element web. Web. Done. Done. Yeah, it might. Interesting. What if I just use the regular link? Uh. No, well, it'll it'll make a thumbnail. I think it'll take you there. But we'll actually try that. No, yeah. Okay. Add element web done. I think I've done something wrong because it's not. Oh, there. Oh, it, that's the form. That's the form. Um, what well, hits hit what hit did save I and wrong? Well, no, hit save and close for a second. This is bugging me now. Um, all right, so let's go back to edit it. Mm -hmm. Three dots, edit. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, if you want to move stuff around, just drag it at the top. Like, you know, this kind of like, let's let's take that Google, yeah, add element, uh, web. Maybe he just doesn't like that it's. Is it private only? That's probably, maybe that's it, who knows? So this is a live demonstration of how to, how to um, troubleshoot. Uh, in in GeoGebra and Google, huh? That's what we're doing. Yeah, this, this is, is waiting. It's just taking its time. Right, gonna, it worked last week, so there's some glitch right now. I'm not going to worry about it. So yeah. okay, so I've got I've got this activity. I'm going to do the three dots, and I'm going to do share, mm -hmm. and I'm going to share it to Google Classroom, mm -hmm. and I choose my class. And right now, why isn't it letting me choose my class? Okay, you know what it is, Tim. What's up? I am running a Zoom thing, which is sucking all my RAM. And I don't no, I, restart my computer before this webinar, which I 100% know better. Okay. And so it's just lagging well, like crazy, which normally works fine. Okay. But that's what I would do, right? It's going to assign it to a class and put it over there where I've constructed this element to be an interactive instructional element that they can mm -hmm. do relatively independently because I designed it that way. Right. Okay, cool. Did we learn anything else last week? Um, we learned where the embed code was for people that want to do that. No. We a little, yeah, we no. won't do that now. No. But um, but that was basically it. How to explore right. GeoGebra's resources, navigate through them, and find stuff that you like. And I'll tell you, by a week from now, it'll be much easier to see things organized on the front page. That's what we're working on. Everything's right always getting better. OK, yeah. so this week, how do I make something? All right. Well, let's make something, let's do two things. Let's go from scratch. Now you can go to, um, let's actually go to where, uh, um, uh, let me see, Ta uh, go up and search classroom resources there. Cause you know how you write add-ons for Google and stuff like for your things. I kind of made like a sort of a, a blank template that you could throw in the classroom. Cause a lot of teachers on Twitter, I found out I've been having issues with my, my administration won't let my kids make uh, a user Google account with third-party apps. And G apps like GeoGebra and Desmos, kids should be able to use their Google school accounts to make accounts with. But for some reason, administrations won't let them do that. So there's a workaround here. GeoGebra, you could totally do it. So could you type Google Classroom in there? I just want to see what comes up. All right, keep going down a little bit. If not, I will give you the link for it. Um, 
type in Google Classroom, Tim, or otherwise I'll, I'll, I'll give you the link right now for it. Um, let me find it quick. Google Classroom 10 or 10. Actually, go, go to my page. Just look up, actually click on distance learning. Here's a way you can find someone's page quickly. Click on distance learning. Click on my name. Now scroll down a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, now go to the book. It's the third one in that row right there. Google okay. app. Jim, you've already lost me. So I have to know that when I go to the GeoGebra page that I type in classroom resources and to look you up and to go to the, the book. Well, you don't have to necessarily. So. Okay, so I, I made those add-ons. Maybe, maybe I went too soon. I could show that later. But um, let's actually tell you what. Let's pretend I didn't do that. Go back to the GeoGebra home. All right. Now go to your profile. What's that? What? Oh, over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, GeoGebra, now go to create. Okay, create. Go to activity. Activity. Okay. Think, think of this like a blank Google Doc. It's basically a, a fresh start of I want to do stuff and I can throw elements in. So let's call it something. Let's let's title it, if I may, let's title it uh, uh, correlation coefficient, something like that. We're going to have kids discover something about that today. So I don't have to teach them what it is. OK, so now um, let's actually add. Um, now you can insert an element. You can insert text. Those are the same things that you had before when you copied someone else's. Right. Okay. So so. so what we're doing is I'm creating, what am I creating? What's the end goal here? The end goal is to create uh, is, is to create an activity here using GeoGebra that I can throw in Google Classroom to have my kids discover X, Y, Z. Okay, so we're doing right. discovery lesson. So we're gonna mm -hmm. discover correlation coefficients. Like okay. what it means, right, okay. okay. So now um, let's actually do, yep, there right. you go. So now okay. go to add element. Let's go to add element, click on GeoGebra. Okay. Click we on. need an applet to throw in here, don't we? So, so now you could, here's the cool part. You could search for existing applets. So if you had a hype, if you actually had a hyperlink, another tab, you could throw it in search and you could do it, but you could type in something. What did somebody else make on this subject? I don't know, uh, that kind of thing. So type what, what shows up. All right, let's go scroll down a bit. I might have one there. I don't know. I know I have one that exists already here. Let's keep going. Um, sometimes it might show up, sometimes it might not, but okay. Yeah. Let's do that one right there. Click, click add on that. Let's see what that does. Now you could also do it from scratch too, right? But see right there, right now, now what I often will ask students to do now, I, I don't actually use that one anymore necessarily because I actually have my students. Pop up. In concept. Huh? So now I'm thinking distance learning. Mm -hmm. How hard is it for me to put a, a short little video in here because I'm not instructing them on this? Simple. Scroll down. Go to add element. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, wait. Hit. Oh, you said no. Hit, hit, hit done. Yep. Hit add, add element. Done. Go to video yeah. and then throw a YouTube link in there. It has to be a YouTube link. No, it could be Vimeo. It could be anything as long as it's. Can it's it be? Um, try it. I don't Google know. Drive? I, huh? Can it be from Google Drive? Try it. Let's see what happens. I've never tried that, but I always put my videos on YouTube. Well, and I'm not opposed to that, but because a lot of schools block YouTube and, and this, that, and the other, I, I always, I, I don't mind. Yeah. To be in Google I, Drive. I also love Screencastify. Mm -hmm. So type video. I'm just going to take any one I can find. I also, I also mark it with made for kids, even for high school, so that there's no, you know, it's like acceptable or whatever. Yeah. I don't know why I'm doing it this way because I know how to do to it. To clear your Cuisinaire rods, go up and refresh okay, the so page. I have this link mm -hmm. to the video in Google Drive. Yep. Okay. Does it work? Or maybe you have to do URL for that. That might be what you right. have to do. Yeah, I think. We'll see. We'll see. Try it, see if that works. Well, if it doesn't, there's okay. always a way where you could put. I have to use YouTube. Okay, got it. Yeah, but here, but or here's, but here's the other way. Just put a text box in and hyperlink the text to that drive. There's always a way. You might want the video on there. I I get that. I get that. But all right, so let me um, get a YouTube video because I would. I just want to see how it looks. Yep. So the and I'm just gonna type correlation coefficient. 
correlation coefficient cool if somebody's doing it the correlation steps, coefficient is to this it's all i ever wanted so i just take this link from the top yep and okay. paste it in over there let's try this again i'm gonna edit this and not use my video from drive got it and there you go yeah, it's embedded in there nicely so you know if i use screencastify which is we're going to use all of the time. Yeah, you drag and drop. You cannot, you cannot arrange elements horizontally right now. It's only vertical. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have, and I, and I bugged the team about that too. But like I said, there's so many things that they're working on at the moment. New apps coming out, yeah, things like that. But possible. yeah. So I could make a just fire up my screencastify, and then it has mm -hmm. a share to YouTube right on there. Grab sure. the link from that, stick it mm -hmm. on, so I can do a little explain. Okay, you guys, I want you to drag these points around. And then and so can, the, just like what I did before, I can add a question, or if I want to do my Google form, I get the embed code and put you it can in. Add a, and you could, and you could add another GeoGebra app in there. Hit GeoGebra for a second. Uh, instead of uh, hit, hit create applet, just go where it says create yeah. in the left. Uh, just choose graphing for now. Okay. All right. Now that is what it looks like. So let's click in the graph somewhere. Okay. Uh, hit done. Just for the heck of it. Hit done. Now, I wanted just to show you this. Some teachers like to embed their own applets in there. Notice if you scroll down a little bit, uh, see how the applet size is 700 by 500. That is small, but with kids with small Chromebook screens, that's like, that's like you know, once you get, if you get beyond 900 by 500, which you can change it, it kind of gets too big for the little Chromebook that the district issue out. You know, that, that's, an, that's an important note there. But if you want to see right now, if you look at the applet and scroll up just a little bit, you cannot, you cannot do anything in that blank app. So what you have to do is scroll up just a tiny bit more and uh, click on the edit icon there. Oh, you click on next to the duplicate. There should be a pencil there. No, okay, so, oh, you're ready. Oh, go to advanced settings, go to advanced. Scroll down, advanced settings. Now you want, if you want your kids to mess with the tools of GeoGebra, you gotta show the toolbar. Okay, so why don't you cl click on all those icons there. I like to give them all the power to do everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Show everything. What yeah, it's doing? no, it's not you. It's a, it's, it, it's a little. Um, it, it likes to go back up. I'm not so sure I, why. I can just do one at a time, and it's gonna be patient. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And what but, about the ones on the left? Same. Yep. I like to whatever I have the power to do in GeoGebra's apps. I like the kids to be able to do in. Um, that's GeoGebra's classic app, by the way. Okay. That's the uh, yeah. So go ahead and hit uh, hit hit done. You could choose the app in which it opens too. Hit done. Now hit save and now hit save and close. All right. So you can have your kids construct their own regressions. Maybe down below you're going to have them construct a regression set of points whose regression whose correlation is say 0.6. I don't know for whatever reason. But your kids can they plot points if they know how to do it. That's learning. That's using JoJo's apps, and it's very easy to do. But um, but the point is, students can build it in five minutes and tell you everything. Okay. It's nice. All right, I'm gonna start over. So I, I'm i on GeoGebra. There's no create button. I'm gonna click on my profile. Yep. Now there's a create button. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna create a new activity. Mm -hmm. So maybe, Do you want, right do you want now to... what I'm doing is I'm working on taking U cubed mm -hmm. uh, activities and making them digital because for obvious reasons, we're not photocopying them and handing them out. So I'm gonna right. do painting U cubed because that's what I'm working on right now. And I would want to put some text in here, I guess, uh, my heading. Now that's not going to hyperlink, right? No, but um, actually hit done. Maybe it will. Um, if you no, it doesn't. So you just got to underline it and then underline it. Go to the A on the left, hmm. and then the chain. The link is up there, um, far right. Oh yeah. And then just put paste it there. Actually, yeah, you I should can't, probably grab the actual. Yeah, you can't put WW in there. It won't like it. It has to be the whole HTTP one. Yeah, I'm used to that. Okay, I'll just put youcube.org. Yep. Right, so it's adapted from youcube.org. You're building cubes and pouring paint 
all over them. Okay, done. Mm -hmm. Add an element and I want a picture and I can just mm -hmm. drag it, right? Yep. And you could size the picture too to be smaller. If you go down a little bit, you can just say, I don't know, like uh, make the width okay. and keep the aspect ratio, of course, but yeah, so you don't distort it. It'll, it'll go automatically. Yep, there you go. Mm. Mm, okay. Okay. And then I'm going to add a question. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. What would be case two? Describe. Do I type in a, a possible? Um, you could only if you want kids. If, if you want to, if you want to put a hyperlink to a hint in there. I've done that before for kids. Hey, if you're having trouble with this, go see this resource. And that resource is hyperlinked to something that I made that illustrates it. You know what I mean? So I like to I like to empower the students to empower themselves, you know. I, I agree. Or you know what you could also do if you wanted to. What it look like so if I save it, how do how do, is this a preview up here? Uh, that's a view. That's that's you can take that to view resource. Just hit save and close. Easier to save and close. Is it? Yeah, you could view it right now. I want to view it right now because I'm not done. Okay, then don't. <laughs> So no, it's not not done because you have to say first, yeah. So, um, but what can I propose this? Why don't we have the kids make the cubes in GeoGebra 3D because it's so easy to do. They can build the case themselves in the digital uh, in, Geo, in GeoGebra they, they 3D. Can, they, they can build these cubes. Oh, it's so easy. All right, how would how would add, we, a, add an element? Add an element. GeoGebra. GeoGebra. Now um, we could go, the, go to create applet. One. Type in 3D graphics. Click 3D graphics. Okay. Okay, now, um, what I want you to do is scroll down and just hit done for now. Okay. Uh, actually, hang on. Full, um, yep. full screen it. Can you full screen it? This is weird. Full, can you make it full screen? Like hit the, yeah, you scroll down. Do you see the done icon on the right? No. No, scroll down. Yeah, that's that's a workflow which I need to report there. But um, we I, I can give you a, I can give you one to put in there. But there should be a done. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's try this again. Okay. Right, X out of there. X out. Sorry. Um, hit. Let's hit add element again. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. And then GeoGebra. Mm -hmm. And let's type in uh, where it says search, just because I know I made this this week. Type in Google Classroom 3D. Please show up. Uh, no, no. All right. So, all right. So it's it's not showing up there. I could give you I could give you a you I can give you a code to put in there to get it, but you wouldn't know it just beginning. So that's not fair to do. Go to create okay. output again. Let's just try that. Close. Hold on. Yep. I I I think the problem is grace and patience. You know, everyone's using the the internet right now. It is. It really is. And Yep. If, if anything is working, that's the real miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, I expect everything to be glitchy right now, and that's okay. I'm going to okay. just drink my, I'm actually drinking tea right now, but I did have coffee earlier. There you go. So let's go. Edit. Let's, I let's bet it's edit working again. fine. I bet it's working fine. It's, is your you know, fan, is your fan going on the computer there? Your fan is like in overdrive? Oh yeah. No, my, it's, it's not happy with me right now. Yeah. So let's click GeoGebra uh, again. I, and I can create an applet. I'm going to do 3D graphics. Okay, hit done. Done is a, oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. X out of the, the keyboard. Hit the keyboard for the X. Oh. Hit the X of the keyboard. Yes, now hit done. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> All right. Oh, now. Well, now we know. And it's incredibly tiny. So now that I zoom in, once I yep. get rid of the keyboard, okay, done. Okay, so right. I have this GeoGebra applet in there. I'm gonna now. Yep. So go to advanced settings. Make sure all the kids, this your students, can do everything that you can do if you were in the 3D app. Because that's basically you're taking GeoGebra's big 3D app. If you go to the 3D app web-based version, you have a smaller version of it right in that activity. That's what it is. Okay. So right. I'm just yeah. doing this with patience because I know what's gonna happen. Is I check it. Yep. Come back to the top. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're sending feedback. It's gonna go back to the top. Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. 
and let's it let's it done for now. Do I want any kind of a heading on here? That's up to you. Could you just go back just a little bit slower and just show those options again and tell people what they do? Absolutely. Um, under advanced settings, right? Now, everything that, when you go to GeoGebra's apps online, just like the graphing calculator or the whatever you go, you have full power to do whatever you want. So the, when I check all those boxes, right? When a, when, a, when a person visits the resource or act, again, when I say resource and activity, I'm talking the same thing. Let's call it an activity. This activity, Alice is building, right? When I, when I go to this hyperlink she gives me, whether it's in classroom or whether it's in GeoGebra, who cares what the LMS is? But basically, if she wants me to have the power to have the tools and the input bar and, and the style bar to quickly color something, whatever, my, my advice to people is to check all of them, you know, because it, it gives the user more functionality instead of viewing it, you want them to interact with it, if that makes sense. So these are all um, permissions you are granting to students to use to interact the with this applet yeah. that you've made. Yeah, on the activity page. Now there is a way around that if she forgets, there is, there is a shortcut if I want, because you see how that's a small applet right there, but it's like, I want this to cover my whole computer screen. Well, there's two ways around it. There's, um, there's the, uh, um, you know, you can blow it up with a little square in the corner when you view it, you know, that makes it full screen. Or um, you could go, you can open it in the app and I'll, I'll walk Alice through it when she hits save and close. So right there. So let's go, let's hit done there. Let's hit, let's hit save and close. I'm gonna save and close. Yep. All right, and this takes you back to your profile. But see your activity there it says activity is painting you cube. Let's click on it and view it like a viewer. Just click on, click on the okay. thumbnail. Yep. Okay. There it is. There's the paint, everything there. So maybe in this so applet great. below, right? So right here, we have GeoGebra's classic app embedded within. Now you can actually, um, I think if you touch on the pyramid, um, yeah, click on the cube tool right there. Mm -hmm. Plot, plot a point at the origin, like zero, zero, zero and two, zero, zero. The red two, the red two. Oh yeah. See, and then hit now. Hit the arrow in the upper left corner there. Hit that arrow in the upper left corner. Mm -hmm. See now you can move B around, but see now I just made a cube, if you will. Yeah. So and now I can now I can eat now I can actually make more cubes. I could translate it, but we don't have to get into the nitty gritty now. Oh, so, just in your opinion. Mm -hmm. This particular activity is um, for like third graders. Mm -hmm. They're okay doing this? Heck yeah. Okay. You, you know, it's just like, but the thing is, you know, and I, I always say this wherever, wherever I'm talking, the opportunity to talk, but with 3D is so underemphasized in all of math curricula in the US. If we live in a 3D world, why are we living in the two dimensional coordinate plane from grade six to grade 12? I don't get it. And the, only, and the only time students work with 3D is surface area and volume. And oh, I got to give them the formulas. No, you don't got to give them anything. You just play. I never told my students the surface area of a cube is 6s squared because I didn't have to. Alice, what I want you to do now is uh, click on the, um, would you please click on the, the cone tool with the plane on it? Yep, click on, uh, no, I'm looking for the intersect. I don't use the classic app as often, but hit, hit the select there way and go back to select. Um, let me see, click on the point tool, point, because there's, there's, there's more tools hidden beneath each one. All right, no, hit the back arrow. I'll click on the plane tool, the, the, the third one in. Oh, the third one in. Yeah, I want to find, see, I don't, because right now the tools are collapsed together. They're not like showing off on the side like they do. Um, but I, I want you to make the net tool right there. Um, actually just type, let's, instead of finding it, let's type it in, go, go to where it says input. Type in net, N-E-T, open parentheses, little a. Enter. Uh, it, didn't oh, like it doesn't like that. Okay, because it's the net tool. There is a net tool up there. I just don't see where it is. Um, actually, here's what I'm going to do instead. Um, net. Mm -hmm. It tried to auto complete. Yeah, yeah. So X out of there. It, I think it wants capital N E T. No. Nope, oh, maybe. It. Try it. Both give you the same options. Yeah. So here's what we're, but there is a net icon. I want to make this simpler, not more complicated. So, um, all right. 
scroll up there. There is a net tool. It's just a thing. You have to click on one of the tools there just to see it. But the point is, I'll, I'll give you another way to do it. Let's let's go back to your profile page, OK? Because that is a small window. Let's go back to your profile. Do I need the net tool? Yeah, I want to I want to show you just to show you here. Let, let's scroll down a little bit. Or just. All right. So, oh, click on the three I dots up there. Click okay. click on the three dots. OK. Yeah. Go to my profile. Yep. Go to the activity. Okay. Click on the three dots there. All right. We'll click on the three dots up above. One thing, Chris, to answer your question from before that you could do is click open an app. Ah. Click, click on open an app. That'll open up in the blank app and make a huge canvas for you to play in, which I think is pretty powerful. I love that feature because now, see, if that's I the have three of these in there. Say it again. If, if I had three. Uh, applets in there. If you had three applets in there, that open an app one will not show up. It only that option only shows up if you have only one in there. Okay, but um, but now there is a net tool there. So if we just got to find it underneath all of those tools up there, there are thousands more if they drop down. So click on any one of them. All right, no, keep going. Uh, there it is. There it is. Okay, but now we need to make the cube again. So just make a cube first. Yep, make the base. All right, and then. Yeah, click somewhere on the gray plane. Yep, just click, uh, click there. And then go back to A or whatever. Yep. And now choose a point on the y axis, say 0, 0, 003, the z axis, I mean, 0, 0, 003. Click. Okay, now click the select arrow in the upper corner there, or to, so you can move it around. Go ahead and move B and C around now. And this is what I had my students do. I just had them play in the app with no instructions. I want you to, you know, just mess around. They get used to it really quickly. And that's one thing that teachers don't like to give their students. They'll do, oh, we got, we got to catch, we got to make sure we're here. By. No, 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 you don't. I always spent the first week or two having my kids play. And yeah, I might have been behind for the first month or two, but by December, or January, February, I was like a couple weeks ahead and I had to hit the brakes, you know? Um, but now if you go to the net tool, Alice, right there under that same drop down where the pyramid is, Touch the pyramid now, anywhere you want. Go back to the gray, go back to the select arrow. Click on the move arrow up in the upper corner. Now drag any one of those gray points down there. Drag points on the net. You can play with it and see how it'll fold back up. Okay. All right. So when I did that with the cube, for example, kids kids just saw, oh, it's the area of a square times six, you know? Or they just, no, they just, they, they, they literally were able to just mess around and play with for themselves and just discover, all right? Exploratory discovery learning, it's so natural within the GeoGebra 3D app. Now, Alice, some of, your view, some of our viewers may like this better. Do you see in the URL where it says classic? The yeah. word classic up there. Can you change the word classic to 3D instead and watch what happens? Yep. It'll open that same resource up in the 3D calculator. I like I like that app better because the classic app is a, is a complex app with a lot of different perspectives. But this is only the 3D perspectives. Now click on the circle triangle right over there. Okay. okay, the circle. Yep, right there. Those are your tools, and I think that's kind of easier because see how they're not overloading you at once with 8,000 of them. You, it, it's like it, it's kind of an ease into it sort of a thing. You know, those are the most big. So make your yeah, make your cube again. There you go. Now touch the net tool. See how it's all there in front of you. I like this app way better than classic. Some long time users of GeoGebra love their classic and that's fine. Everybody has their favorite, but click on the word net and touch, there you go. Now click on the move. Now see that blue arrow down there? You're gonna make more nets. You gotta turn the tool off. Net is still highlighted there. So you gotta, you gotta turn that off and then hit, here you go. Now you can fold it up. You actually make two nets without realizing it. See what I mean? So there you go. Okay. Again, this app you could play. It's so much, it's so easy to play in this app. You can make spheres, you can make pyramids. Hit the word more, you'll see a lot more functionality you can do, especially with UCube content and 3D. You know. It's pretty cool. And you, you know what I love about GeoGebra too, so intuitive it is. Do you, do you see the midpoint or center tool up above? If you go up above the right. That midpoint or center tool, if you touch the square, it puts the center of the square. 
if you touch a circle, it does the center of the circle. If you touch a, yeah, see what I mean? If you touch a triangle, it gives you the centroid. But see, kids come to discover this, like the word center is very ambiguous in math because it depends on what object you're talking about. But here, GeoGebra, it makes it so intuitively, it makes it so intuitive, you know? That's what I love about it. That tools have multiple features on different objects when they're applied to different objects here. So, but now you, yeah, so that was taken from that. But now with that there, you might want to save it. The thing is that thing, if I need a GeoGebra account to save that construction and give it to you in Google Classroom, right? If you go to the bars in the upper left corner. Yeah, so I just want to, since you yeah. said, I just want to confirm something. I think you texted me last week mm -hmm. is that with GeoGebra, when I share it in Google Classroom, they don't have to log in or have an account. Right. But when you, when you actually, but the thing is you need to, you, in order for that to take place, you need to create an activity with this blank 3D app embedded in it, if that makes sense. So, right. yeah. yeah. So right here, can I share my I'm screen for a second? Applets. I'm posting um, activities. Can, is it okay if I share my screen for one second? And then I'll get right back. I promise I won't drive. You're still holding the wheel. I have to move things around to find where the stop share button. There it is. All right. So if I <laughs> wasn't hesitant. Oh, it said it said you disabled it. You have to enable it. Let's try it again. There we go. Thank you. So now right here, see like and, and I could give I can give the users the hyperlinks to these blank templates, but see right here, all I did, Alice, this week was say I made an activity, but you see how that's the only thing in it? Right there where we went, that's what I was trying to find when you made the YouTube thing. So right here, I can take, if I want my, if I want my students work to save, first of all, what I'm going to do is go here, go to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to go to, I can either can you easily get to the YouTube stream. Say it again. Are you able to get to the YouTube stream? Yeah, yeah I, I could drop it in. I drop those links in there. And then what I'm going to do Mm -hmm. is I'm going to try and get that cube in there again. Is that all right? Yeah. 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 So here's what, here's what I'll do. So um, your screen. now do you want to, now you could, let me just give you the links to all of them. So you can pick the app that you want. I made, I tried to make it easy for teachers to do that. Let me just get it quick. Um, there it's, I put them all in a book there. That's the link you want right there. I'm going to drop it in the, I'm going to drop it in the chat. And is it, I assume you've already shared it to your Facebook group too. Oh yeah, it's there. All the all, this link is in the Facebook group. Yep. So I just sent it to the panelists, but um, yeah, because they're there. I'll get it up in the uh, oh, YouTube thanks. chat. You're that's welcome. So that looks good. See now, you could do one of two things. See the templates are in, the templates are right here in the second chapter. So I took all four of the most popular apps, the the all of these, right? The classic Alice is what you were doing with the YouTube thing, but. I like, I like to actually have kids, if it's only 3D, I like to play in the 3D. So I go here, ah, now I, as a teacher, I have to make a choice. Okay, do I wanna copy this activity just like Alice did and, and put my own stuff in it and then assign it in classroom, right? Or, hey, I just need a blank grid for kids to do their work. If that's the case, just pointless to copy. All I gotta do is go here and hit share and then I'll map it to my Google Classroom. And I do, so I can do so right here. And then I say do now. And it's gonna sign to everybody. It's gonna sign to everybody, but hey, hey do you still say share link pop up? Yeah. I'll do it again. Well, it's just frozen on there. Right here. No, no, no. It was frozen on there. And what you were doing wasn't showing. Continue. Oh, weird. Okay. No, it wasn't. Um so I go here. I'm just gonna use it as it is because all I need is a template. I go to share. I'm gonna to go to Google Classroom, mm -hmm. right? Now this is gonna stay anyway, but like now I can choose my you class. Need, you need to cancel this. Why do I have to cancel that? Okay, why is the thing popping up on, it's staying popped up? It just does. I don't know why it does, it just does. You don't hit cancel? Oh, well, I could, I could now, I mean, if it- Well, I whatever you were doing watch. when it popped up, I can't see it. It doesn't yes. show on the screen share. This is not showing what I'm moving around right now. It's moving your mouse. Okay. 
Wow. Okay. So this is, this is, and maybe it's a zoom thing, but I'm, it's really literally is, let me try doing this and sharing it again. Maybe you'll see it now. Um, you see it now. I see. Yeah. The Google classroom pop-up. Okay. This, this white thing I'm moving around. No, now it's just, okay. I, you know what I know what's going on what? is it's generating a new window and you're in the new window doing stuff. Oh, let me That's make it a tab in the window. Shared. So what happened is it's like a, it does, it is just a zoom thing. So I right see. now it's just showing the create assignment in Google Classroom. So you're going to need to um, exit and share yep. again what you want to share. And if anything I pops up, it's just, they won't see it. Ah, uh, gotcha. It's, it's the Google Chrome. It's the Google, this, it's this one right here, maybe. You see it now? It's well, doing it's our best to break chairs. the internet today. Yeah. What are you trying to do? I'm just trying to assign it to a class in Google Classroom. So no, that we way already I... showed how to do that, so it's fine. Okay, good, good. So that's what I would do. So this is the blank template right here that I would throw in your YouTube thing if you want, uh, right there. Remember, Alice, when you went to when you went to create applet and it says search for existing applets. If you typed in, um, if you typed in these last seven digits there, it would pop up automatically, and you could just throw it right in there, and you'd be done. All right. So, um, yeah, when we say, I know the funny, the word easy. Oh, it's easy. It's like it's all subjective to the user. Someone who's totally brand new to Google, you know, never used Word or even like that. It's like nothing is easy. You know what I mean? But it's like. Right. I, it's funny. You, you ask, you know, Google is easy for you, but people don't know, you know, to make a copy when they ask for edit access. So it's kind of like, guys, you know. Yeah. Uh, I had someone message me today. I'm just going to use this for personal use. I need a bingo template. And I'm like, just, just file <laughs> a copy. Exactly. You're good. Exactly. So, but for those watching, if you want to learn more about the 3D app, um, I'm going to do another webinar Wednesday night. You can learn a whole lot more. We'll even play an augmented reality there too. Um, so you can register. Uh, the link I think will be, if you could put the link to that webinars in the YouTube description after, that'll be cool. So um, the, let me get the link to that again. Yep. So. Sure. I'll, I'll drop it in. The, it was up there in the chat, but oh no, it's not. Let me get it. Should it be this one? Sure. Yeah, it's in the chat. Oh, the oh, it's in the it's in the Google slides, the tiny URL one. I lost the window that was sharing. Really hate Zoom. Okay. Now you're back. Yes, but I lost there the window that had the applet. It was it was there, and I selected it. And then it was missing, like it closed, but I didn't close it. All right, so I went back to GeoGebra. I'm logged there in. Go. Yep. I'm gonna go to my profile. Got it. Okay. And I am going to open this activity that I've been trying to make. Mm -hmm. And. Okay, I've got a place to type my answer. They can check it. I want them to build this. So I probably want to put some directions on. I'm not editing. Three yep, dots. So go there, go to edit. Yep. Come here. No. Your computer is like uh, worn out and dehydrated. No kidding. Like, can you see that I'm clicking on it? Oh, yeah, I do. Ah. Uh, Oh, that's O, not zero. Okay, it's a zoomed in issue. I'm I'm zoomed in. Okay, all right. I'm going to edit the activity, and I would like to add a text box above the applet because it doesn't mm -hmm. really have any context. Okay, Actually, so I would you the applet up. Yep, you could sh you could shift it anywhere vertically you want. Yep. Okay, so then, cool. So I'm going to add an element and do text. I'm going to say create a cube in the applet. And if I click the A, didn't you show last week that I can put in GeoGebra pictures? Mm -hmm. It's under the tools uh, next to BB code to the left of BB code. Oh, OK. Oh, there we go. It's a little tool icon thingy. Yeah. Go okay. to the top right. It's five. It's like, where's Waldo? Which, which icon would they click on to make this pyramid? 
Uh, you want a pyramid now? Uh, no, it's a square, a cube. What do, we, what do I click on it so they make a cube? It's a, it's a cube. Yep, yep. So I often get directions, use the cube tool to construct a cube with vertices 0, 0, 0, and 2, 0, 0. You can put the directions right in there, you know? Let me hit save, and it puts it in there. OK. OK, so we're going to use the cube tool. icon, we get the icon yeah. to put a point. To construct the cube who's ver with two vertices at origin and wherever. Yeah. However you want to word it. Okay. I mean, or something two, like zero, that. zero or something like that. Whatever. I'm, yeah. I'm not doing this for reals. So right. I want to drag it up because I want the directions above there. Yep. Exactly. Okay. And I've got my question in here. What would it look like? And mm -hmm. then I just save and close. I'm done, right? Yeah. So then I want to. Yeah, you polish it to your heart's content after, and then uh, and actually you could even change the inter you could change the interface of that uh, classic app if you want to make it a three D look instead. There is a way to do it. You could do it with just one click if you go to advanced settings. Remember, yeah, let's just do that quick so that way we can see here. Go mm -hmm. to edit, and then scroll down to the applet once it loads. Click on the little pencil in the upper corner there to edit it, mm -hmm. and now scroll down a little bit. Go to advanced. And then see GeoGebra app to put in, choose 3D calculator. Yeah, that seems better. And now done, and now save and close. Okay. See, that's a lot nicer. That and even nice. in the even in the calculator itself, if you, you could actually show the grid on the on the plane, there's we we go that maybe next week. So you could actually make it look the way you want to look. That's a whole nother webinar topic, you know. But yes. Yeah. You put the URLs in the chat. I don't see any of them. I did. For the templates, I did, yes. Yes, but Chris, did you put him in the live, the YouTube live chat? Well, I thought I did. I'm thinking it blocks them, which it makes ends me in... happy. I'm happy that they are blocking things in that chat. So unfortunately, then. <laughs> well, I, I could put um, if people are if people are in GeoGebra. Um... Well, if they, I think the best way to do this is that they would join your join uh, the Facebook, Facebook group. group or... Or if you look at me, if you look at my last like three or four Twitter posts, it's like it, there's a link right on there. I have a YouTube video with that. It's all on my all my Twitter page. You can find more info about that yeah. easily. Cool. Is there are there other language groups for teachers using GeoGebra yes. besides English? Yes, um, I uh, I'm helping to coordinate with that. It's just with so much going on. But, but there's one for German. There's one for there's one that was just set up for Arabic, uh, Polish, and there's interest for other languages too. So. And again, not to be discriminatory for languages, but it's like when, when, when most of the people in a group speak the same language, it's nice not to have to translate, you know, because it's never perfect anyway when it translates. Um, I, I always heard one person who's a foreign language teacher said what students do to actually make, because if you use Google Translate for like worst time, what they do is they actually will type something in English, translate it to French, and then, he, and then he'd go French to English, and then he'd do it again and skip him that one. So there's enough mistakes in there, so they kind of get away with it. But um, yeah, but with just getting rid of the language barrier, I think having language groups, GeoGebra felt it was a solution because GeoGebra is international. Mm -hmm. And so to literally have some, you know, and also education in America is different from education in Europe. In Europe right now, and this is something else I think you and Joe Bowler and a lot of people are discussing, it's like when state like exams in Europe assume that CAS features exist on tech, you know, they, you know, and so therefore it's like, you know, why are we giving exams in the United States that you know, require students to do something that you can ask Siri to do. Not yeah. to say they shouldn't learn things, but it's at the same time, it's like if, if the advanced CAS exists, what can how, we need to be teaching differently? And again, that's a whole other webinar for a whole different day. That is but, a webinar um, for a different day. Yeah. Um, so if you do go to Facebook and you look up teachers using GeoGebra. Here, I'll share it. Um, oh, I can't no screen point share. sharing it. We can't put it anywhere. Right. So right. it's, it's pretty it. fairly Don't simple share. to just search this on Facebook and your resources are right in there. So we should be, we should be pretty good. If you tweet them, tweet them, put them on the hashtag. So our hashtag is GGB chat. Yep. Maybe you could just tweet those. Well, GeoGebra put out a tweet about that group, but I could retweet it again for sure. If you could put out so. the links to each of those links to your templates, 
That yep, would be it's all it's all on it's all on my it's all on Twitter. It's on every it's on every one. So you'll find it. if you scroll down three or four or five, it's there. Okay, awesome. So yeah. How I'll show the last slide. That one? Oh, the Tim yeah. webinar. Yeah. So tinyurl.com slash Tim webinar, where Tim will do a proper job of showing you how to use GeoGebra rather than trying to show me what I care about. Well, it's just, it's both. It's just the ads. It's, it's all, being able to integrate effectively is just as important, in my opinion. So what are we going to do next week? What don't next I know? Week, well, next week, we could actually start dabbling and we could take baby steps and in going into the apps themselves. We, we know how to use resources, look and make in and out. We're experts at that now. Right? So if we could actually start dabbling in the graphing calculator, hey, I know how to do this on a TI. How do I do this here? And foster and talk little and talk bits along with it. We'll explain. We'll do maybe 15 minutes in the graphing calculator, 15 in geometry, 15 in 3D, and then it'll be done. Okay. That's cool. That sounds great. Cool. Yeah, thanks. Because not every not every time when I foster discovery learning in class, I didn't have kids go to an activity I made. I just have them open up the calculator app on their phone or on their computer and just start making, you know, because I didn't have time to make an activity, but they're building themselves. So and that happens. Great. Hey, it's noon. We should let everybody go. Hey, can I can I ask one favor? This is really, you can stop the grade, but if you share your screen one more time. Me? Yeah. So share your screen one more time. I want to see those bookmarks up there in that tab. And I was wondering if you could put a little GeoGebra bookmark right up there where, uh, put it right next to, you could put it uh, right near the Desmos one and the other math that took out. Wait a minute. Where do yeah. I put bookmarks? Yeah, you should make a bookmark. I don't need so you don't have to. Just GeoGebra.org. Yeah. These are all shortcuts to my Google Classrooms. So like ah. if I click on this, it goes to the, it goes specifically, like I can't go to classroom.google.com. I got to have the whole code to this class, but more importantly, I want it to open up to the classwork page. So got it. Got that's it. the marks. I know you'd like to control me, but I like no, to type no, no. websites. That's all good. I was just messing with you. <laughs> so. Yeah, thanks. I think that's the, the best part, though. It is really easy to get to. I can just go to geogebra.org. So those aren't the things that I bookmark. Um, but if I had a specific activity, so what I would bookmark actually is that 3D activity that you've been trying to um, share with me that I couldn't find. So once I go to the Facebook page and actually get this up, because it's something I would want to use, you had a template over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's totally what I would want to bookmark. So I'll look okay. into that later. You got it. Oh, it's one minute after three or 12 for you. Yep. So yeah, I'm going to stop the live.